Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Wagoner, and today I'm going to talk to you about an extinguishable propellant that we developed under a Navy Phase II SBIR program at Physical Sciences Incorporated. This tech talk is an overview of that technology and I've also included a summary of our company for you. So thank you for attending today. Physical Sciences Incorporated, or simply PSI, was founded in 1973 as a small research company. And to this day, technology development is a core strength of our business that has enabled more recent commercialization efforts to be successful. Our headquarters is in Andover, Massachusetts. And in the past 10 years, we've established new facilities in Epping, New Hampshire for propulsion and energetic scale up and in Wilmington, Massachusetts for product manufacturing. Last year, our annual revenue was about $80 million, and about 35% of those dollars were earned from production of products that have transitioned to defense or commercial markets, while the remaining 65% came from R&D work, which is a large reason why we have many folks with PhDs, constituting more than a third of our staff at PSI. Aside from propulsion and propellants, I've listed several other technical fields on this slide, which are areas of strength at PSI. Our current products include lasers, laser-based sensors, UAVs, batteries, and radiological material detection. The Navy challenge that resulted in our SBIR program was the requirement to develop new energetic materials capable of igniting using electrical means offering an on-off propulsion capability for thrust control motors. And all of this must be done with environmentally safe materials. The transition target for such a technology is thrust control motors on divert and attitude control systems, such as the DAX on the SM3 kill vehicle, and also reaction control system. Another transition target is dual pulse or multi-pulse rocket motors. And a propellant that meets these challenges must have a fast response commonly expected to be less than 10 milliseconds. Any propellant that is able to turn off or extinguish is expected to do so with a response time of less than 20 milliseconds. And a controllable propellant that does this must uh, avoid any spill hazards on Navy ships, so no liquids would be allowed for this sort of need. This propellant and the motor as a whole must also be insensitive munition compliant. A technology that can meet that challenge will result in several improvements that meet present-day Navy needs. For missile interceptors, our defense systems must adapt to emerging threats from hypersonic weapons, which may be done with higher performing propellants or on-demand thrust control to offer coasting capability and an increase in range. Present day thrust control motors use solid propellant gas generators with very limited control. These systems must burn to completion after ignited shortening the useful flight time of the device. Liquid propellants could offer on-off control using valves, but this route poses safety hazards due to the toxic or carcinogenic nature of liquid propellants, such as hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, for example. These propellants are not allowed on Navy ships. So DAX or dual pulse motors would instead benefit from a controllable solid propellant which PSI has addressed by developing an extinguishable solid propellant that I will talk about now. PSI's technology solution is a propellant we call CHICS, which stands for Self-Extinguishing High Specific Impulse Controllable Solid. This propellant is extinguishable by design and is reignited on demand using electrical energy. The formulation that we use to mix CHIX propellant is remarkably simple, and none of the ingredients are new or novel in any way. This propellant uses HTPB binder, DDI curative, ammonium perchlorate, and aluminum, allowing us to remain IM compliant and fall under 
an expected 1.3 energetic hazard classification, which is what you want. Since this is an AP aluminum composite propellant, we were able to achieve a high specific impulse and density. As part of our phase two SBIR with the Office of Naval Research, we completed the phase two option one program in December. That funding increment allowed us to demonstrate on-off controllability of the extinguishable propellant in a ground-based five liter gas generator, similar in, to, in size to what would be used in the SM3 DAX. Although our SBIR efforts did focus on the DAX application, we've recently seen a stronger pull from the multi-pulse rocket motor applications where this technology could find a home. We also presented this work at the De December JANF meeting. And there's an opportunity to continue this work under an option two program that can begin at any time in the next six months if $500,000 is provided from a non-SBIR funding source to match SBIR funds made available by ONR. The real advantages of our extinguishable propellant is the on-demand thrust response. And this is similar to a liquid rocket engine, but again, this is using a solid propellant. And for a DAC specifically, this would mean a more than 3x increase in range enabled by allowing the kill vehicle to coast in between maneuvers. And there are no new safety and logistical requirements that would be imposed by this uh, energetic material. Uh, there are no new propellant ingredients or novel um, materials involved in the formulation. And we do indeed expect this to be IM compliant and hazard class 1.3 material. To transition this technology to the fleet, we're working with ONR to search for a specific platform or program of record that is in need of advanced solid propul propulsion technology. And for that reason, our current phase two option one and potential option two programs are not yet aligned with a specific program in, of record. Instead, the on-off hot fire demonstrations that we've done to date have been executed to form a showcase for Navy programs that we do identify in the future. An FRP manufacturing partner uh, still must be selected in order to transition this to the fleet. And we intend to select such a partner in collaboration with whatever PEO or PM uh, that is in need of this technology. And of course, uh, whatever propulsion system, solid rocket motor uh, that adapts this technology would go through requalification uh, with the vehicle integrator, which may or may not be the same prime as the um, propulsion um, production partner. And so we intend to um, select that manufacturing partner after the the home for the technology, the transition target target has been identified. And again, this could be an application such as the solid propellant gas generator on the SM3 kill vehicle, or this could be um, a dual pulse or multi-pulse motor that replaces a single pulse motor to extend range. A partnership that helps us transition this propellant to the fleet uh, would look something like this. Um, to get to full rate production, in-house we do have the capability to do propellant batches up to 15 pounds that will get us closer to full rate production, but not there. And so after increasing the TRL with our own capabilities, we're looking for a partner that can um, move us to LRIP and FRP rates. This could be Aerojet Rocketdyne, NAMO, or Northrop Grumman, which are all licensed to do um, propellant and rocket motor production for the Navy. So in the near term, our activities are to um, find an application that's interested in um, partnering with ONR 
to fund our phase two option two program. And this is where we would validate ignition, extinguishment, and pressurization in hot fire testing with a flight like solid propellant gas generator. So this would move us from heavyweight ground based material to a flight like configuration. And an alternative approach to that option two program would be to tailor it towards a multi pulse rocket motor application if that non SBIR funding source was indeed um, an axial solid rocket motor propulsion system. And that would increase the TRL from four to five, and that would be done by matching 500K of ONR SBIR funds with at least 500K of non SBIR uh, funds. And so we view this as a low risk trial period for any Navy PEO to get involved and evaluate the technology firsthand and see if there is indeed uh, benefits towards a future phase three program, which again would be tailored to that application, obviously. And it could be a DAX application, which is what I've listed on this slide, or a multi-pulse rocket motor. That concludes my Tech Talk presentation for our extinguishable propellant technology. And so if you found anything in this talk to be interesting, uh, please reach out to us. Again, my name is Jeff Wegener. I'm the PI for this Navy SBIR program. You can email me or call me at the Bumble number listed on this slide. You can also reach out to Jim Glenn, our VP of Corporate Initiatives. These are common interface for PEO and PM Navy customers that we deliver products to today. You can also uh, reach out to us via our virtual booth for this NAVC FST event. And thank you for your attention today. Thank you for attending my talk.